When your manhood bends in a different direction, visit PDURO.com to find a urologist because a bend in your erection might be Peyronie's disease or PD. It's a condition that involves a buildup of scar tissue, also called plaque, but it's treatable. Zyaflex, collagenase Clostridium histolyticum, is the only non surgical FDA approved injection for Peyronie's disease. Zyaflex is a prescription for adult men who have a plaque that can be felt and a curve in their penis greater than 30 degrees at the start of treatment. Along with daily penile stretching and straight exercises, Zyflex has been proven to help gradually reduce the bend. Results will vary. Don't receive if the treatment area involves your urethra, the tooth that urine passes through. You're allergic to any collagenase or the ingredients in Zyflex. May cause serious side effects, including penile fracture or other serious injury during an erection, severe allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis, and localized skin and soft tissue death called necrosis due to hematoma, which could require surgery. You may feel sudden back pain reactions after treatment. Seek help right away if you have any signs of injury. Do not have sex or any sexual activity during and for at least four weeks after each treatment cycle, which includes two injections, one to three days apart. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions. If you have a bleeding condition or take blood thinners, as risk of bleeding or bruising at the treatment site is increased. Ask your doctor about all possible side effects and for product information. Talk to a urologist about Zyaflex. Find a Zyaflex trained urologist at PDURO.com or call 877-942-3539. Postseason run in the spring, the Columbus River Dragons are gearing up for the 2022-23 season at the Columbus Civic Center. Inside Edge Club packages for you to guarantee your seat at every home game this season are available now by visiting rdragons.com or by calling the offices at 706-507-GOLD. That's 706-507-4625. And stay up to date with all things River Dragons this offseason by following the team on social media, C underscore River Dragons, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. WQE 99.1 FM Noonan, WBRQ LaGrange, WZV 90.5 FM Lionville, JC Sports Networks. This is for the busted hearts. This is for the question marks. This is for the hello, friend, and welcome to the Bible with Bob. So grateful to have this time to study with you again. Would never get tired of getting into the Word of God, as I said to my wife just earlier today. This is my passion. If the Word of God is not your passion, I hope when we continue to study that the Holy Spirit will light a fire in your heart and make it like Jeremiah, a fire shut up in your bones. If you don't study and tell people about Jesus, it'll be like a fire shut up in your bones. So we're in the book of Revelation. We're in chapter 6 this time. And we're only going to take the first eight verses because the first eight verses deal with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Oh, honestly, we're only going to get about mm, maybe five, six minutes with each one. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to get to this in just a second. Um, we're only going to be able to spend five or six minutes with each one. So I'm, I'm uh, going to be praying about it this over the next period of time before we meet again and uh, see, maybe maybe we'll do some expansion next time. So first, let me give you my email address, Bible with Bob, B-I-B-L-E-W-I-T-H-B-O-B at gmail.com. Please drop me a line. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think we could do some more expansion, if you've got questions after we get done or any of the other shows that we've done together. Um, give me Give me some feedback, and the feedback that's been coming in has been good. Iron sharpens iron. I'm grateful for you, and I'm grateful for this time to study with you. Let's take it to the Lord, and then we can talk some more. Father, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time together. Thank you for allowing us to to meet. It is in your power, Holy Spirit, that this word comes alive, and we ask you to come and inhabit our fellowship and our learning tonight. Teach us, Lord, teach us what it is you have to say. These four horses, these four horses, the whole world's been waiting. Everybody, you know, says they can hear the hoofbeats. Well, we're going to get it and pin it down tonight. I think they're right. But Father, you know best. And you said, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has trouble of its own. So let us focus today on what you've written down for us to learn. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody asked me why I pray with my hands up, because I'm grateful. I pray with my hands up because I surrender. 
the denomination I was raised in, you didn't put your, if you put your hands up, it was because you were trying to reach something on a shelf, you know? <laughs> and back in the day when I was a kid, we dressed up to go to church. So times have changed, but one thing hasn't. Jesus Christ is still Lord. Jesus Christ is our only salvation, and Jesus Christ is coming back. But before he does, there are a few things that have to happen. And here, in the first eight verses, these seals that are going to be busted open on that scroll that the Lord handed the Lamb last time we talked is going to roll. They're going to start coming out. We're going to talk about that. I got all kinds of notes. I hope to dispel some of the rumors that people have you know, um, developed and in, in, in innuendo and there's things that are wrong and then they say, well, nobody knows. Well, you know what? Yes, we do. We surely do. The Bible's full of all kinds of translation. It translates itself. So I'm going to do a little bit of that tonight, cross-referencing uh, uh, scripture. So if you've got a pen and paper, you might want to write it down and get ready because we're going to be rolling. And um, I want to ask a special favor of you, friend. Would you pray for me personally? I have been under physical attack for weeks. I know you've noticed the last few times we've gotten together that I don't look good. I've got dark circles under my eyes and this and that. Well, I'll tell you what's going on. The enemy does not want me to start the church that we're planning this summer. I'm stepping into a senior pastor role, and we're starting a church in a place that the devil's got his throne. And we're not playing. We're going to give the word of God out. We're not going to go to go to war. Jesus said, let me do it. So we're going to fight in his name by putting the word of God out. And this is one place where I feel like you and I can sit down and just talk about the word of God. We don't have to talk about churches and all that other kind of stuff. We can just talk about the word. But I wanted to ask you to pray for me, if you would. Pray for my family as well because it's it's illness and attacks and people don't tell you they're sick when you go on a business trip and then they wait until you're home and then you find out it's it's just it is what it is it's the world and the world does not want the word of god out so friend i'm asking you to pray just like i pray for you okay all right revelation chapter 6 verses 1 through 8 i'll be reading from the new king james as is my custom and a giant print. See, look at that. Uh, for those who see me on YouTube, you can see how big that print is. For those on the radio, uh, when you hear me stumbling and stammering and falling all over my words, I really did learn to read. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it happens. So here we go. Chapter 6, verse 1, the book of Revelation. Now, I saw, uh, I, did I tell you it was the New King James? Just wanted to make sure I got that in one more time so you know which one I'm coming from. <laughs> Now, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out, conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword. Verse 5 And when he opened the third seal I heard the third living creature say Come and see. So I looked and behold a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying A quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Verse 7, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, death and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. All right, so there we go. Revelation chapter 6. Verses 1 through 8, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, you know, there's all kinds of wild uh, stories about what, who they are, what they are, this and that and the other. But I'm just going to tell you straight out. These judgments are severe. 
And the very first one is the king we've been asking for. What do I mean, Bob? What's that mean? Here's what it means. When Samuel went before the Lord and said, Lord, they've rejected me. He said, no, Samuel, they've rejected me. And they wanted a king. He gave them one. He gave them Saul. Tall, good-looking, strapping, big curly hair. Wicked. Started out okay. But, you know, so did Solomon. And they asked for a king. We want to be like everyone else. We want a king. Okay. But see, God already knew they were going to do that. And God knew through that line that was coming after him that Samuel anointed later, that would be David, that that would be the root of Jesse from where the Son of Man would come, the Messiah. Now, on this earth, in the last days, there will be a man. There will be a man who is like Christ. That's what Antichrist means, like Christ. And this is him. He's going to be on a white horse. Why? Because God is moving out of the way, if you will. The Holy Spirit's backing up just a little bit. This is his time. Now, see, you would think that someone who has access to the throne, and how do we know? Because in Job it tells us he was called with the sons of God to stand in front of the throne. So we know that Satan hasn't come down yet. And we know that he still has access to the throne. He's up there lying on us every day. Liar. And he is going to indwell this guy halfway through the tribulation period. But until then, this guy's going to have his spirit, okay? So for those first three and a half years, this guy's going to be meek and mild and peaceful and let's all kumbaya and hug each other and love, 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 drink a Coke and a smile. He's going to be everything like that. But in the true identity, he is a ravenous wolf. And he's going to tear this world apart. So... As he gets ready to leave, it's funny. The four beasts around the throne are the same four beasts that appear with the throne when it appears in other places in the prophets. When you see it in Isaiah, when you see it in um, Daniel or Ezekiel, anywhere you see the throne, and they call them the whirlwinds or whatever, these beasts are there. So these beasts guard the four, guard, guard, not gourd, the four corners of the throne. And we've already talked about what they look like. We're going to get into some of their um, characteristics later, okay? So it says, he heard one of the four living creatures, verse 1, saying with a voice like thunder, come and see. All right, this is the big one because this marks the end. When this happens, seven years starts. I don't know if it's to the minute, if it's to the peace treaty is signed, and he's doing it, I don't know. But the first seal is open. There are many, and I mean many, theologians right now who are saying this has already happened. Maybe it has. The Lord spoke to my heart in 1998, 99, and showed me the face of someone on a newscast one night, way back when I worked in broadcasting, and said, there he is. He's not even in politics anymore. But I heard that voice. I had been fasting and praying about other things, and I heard that. So his spirit is here. Like Christ, anti-Christ, not against Christ. He, of course, he's against Christ. But he can't get you to march behind him if he's against him. He wants to be like him, against him. Listen to me. I sound, I sound like I'm from Alabama. I apologize. I really do. Mama, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. All right. So uh, in verse 2, when he said, I looked and saw the white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, a bow, war. War. Okay? He's going to have a lot of war. This guy's a conqueror. And a crown was given to him. So that means he's going to be in charge. A crown on that noggin. Now remember when we first see the lamb, there's seven horns. We're going to come into all that later. I just wanted to refresh your memory. Um, This guy's going to be Antichrist. Right? Like Christ. Seven horns. You'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about later. And... um, And he went out, he went out loving and kissing and hugging and throwing flowers, yeah. No, oh, I'm sorry, that's not what it says. It says he went out conquering and to conquer. In other words, I'm the boss, 
do what I say. And if you don't do what I say, well, you can get a little help. Remember when the seven churches were being warned about all those things? Remember when I told you it doesn't really matter if you think there were seven periods of time that have already passed or seven things that you go in and out of all day long? It doesn't matter. What matters is that we are going to be persecuted for the name of Christ. Praise his name. Praise his name. To be counted worthy for that. So old Antichrist here, he's... He's tough. Now, I want you to remember this. Forward, I mentioned this last time, Revelation 14, 14. I'm going to read it to you. Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having in on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Okay, so somebody said to me, and it, I thought it was very interesting. He's being sent out from heaven. How do you know this isn't Jesus? Catch that silence right there? I was absolutely dumbfounded. I'm like, excuse me? Look, it says right here. The beasts are telling you, here goes one that's going out to conquer. Well, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to he's going to kill up and, and blood will be up to the horse's bridle and all these other. Of course, that's what any Christ is going to do. But guess what? These judgments are for those on the earth. Whoever's here. Now we know that there will be seals on the heads of his, on, on the heads of the Lord's, and we're going to get to that, okay? I don't want to get ahead. But I just wanted to remind you of something. He ain't by himself. Old, old, old Antichrist here is not by himself. Remember, later we're going to talk about the false prophet, who I believe is already here, and we're going to talk about... Um, how they're going to work together, and maybe some systems that are already in place that they just fall in on. But we'll get there. So let's look at verse 3. And when he opened, this is, the, this is the conflict time now, okay? So, and when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see, okay? And he told him, another horse, fiery red. Look, I'm going to read this straight through, and then we're going to come back and do a quick tag on this. Another horse, fiery red, went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. To take peace from the earth. Friend, look around. Bob, I don't watch the news. I don't care. Read. Bob, I don't like to look at the internet. Don't. Just go outside. If our Supreme Court overturns Roe versus Wade and puts abortion back in the states, they've already told us they're going to burn cities and riot and throw a fit because they don't like the fact that they can't take innocent life. So, friend, what are you going to do about that? This guy's coming to take peace. That's part of it. This is already rolling, whether he's got here yet or not. And that people should kill one another. War. Wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, famines, and droughts. Right? Right? And there was given to him a great sword. He's going to do so much physical damage. You have no idea what he's going to do. Neither do I. I mean, we only have what, what the Lord gave us here. And a lot of people say, well, this is Ezekiel 38 and 39, Gog and Magog. No, let me, let me read Ezekiel 38, 14 and 16 for you here, okay? I'm going to dispel this. Therefore prophesy, son of man, and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord God, and when you hear those phrase, that phrase, you better be speaking for the Lord or you're supposed to be dead. So I want you to think about this. Ezekiel is prophesying. Thus saith the Lord God, on that day my people Israel are living securely. Will you not know it? You will come from your place out of the remote parts of the north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great assembly, and a mighty army. And you will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. And it shall come about in the last days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am sanctified through you before their eyes, O Gog. All right. That, that is Armageddon. That's it. That's the last one. That's when the 
the true King of kings and Lord of lords comes down here on his white horse and takes care of business. But Antichrist is going to cause so much havoc and be able to step in and make peace and, and roll up countries and get people to love him and make them take the mark of the beast and cut off them being able to eat or for them to get something, you know, that, that's supposed to be forced on them to make them feel better. Whatever it is he's going to do, he's going to have people coming in thousands and tens of thousands. So, friend, that's why what we're doing is so important. We have to do this. The word of God is not getting out. We, we're an unrepentant people, Christians. Come on. This red horse is going to bring a sword. He's not bringing a picnic basket. He's not Little Red Riding Hood. He's coming to kill and destroy families, countries. He doesn't care. You in a car wreck. Me falling down the stairs and breaking my neck. Anything. He doesn't want us. I want you to write this down. Satan does not want us. He just does not want our Father to have us. When he stands at the great white throne judgment, <coughs> because that's where he's going to get his. Antichrist and, and uh, false prophet will already be in the lake of fire. But when he gets his, he doesn't want to be alone. Hmm. I'm all about leaving him out there by himself. So you've got to study this. I want you to read this. I want you to take it in and I want you to understand what you're looking at. War. Verse, verse 5. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. See, each corner of the throne, the beast is saying, come here, let me show you something. Come here, let me show you something. Come. Come. That's a command. Come. He's not, he's not just saying, yo, man, come here. Come here, check this out. Opens his jacket pocket, and there's some fake Rolexes in there. It's not what it is. <laughs> I told you he doesn't want me to talk because he knows what's coming. I like to remind him of chapter 21 and 22 all the time. The Lord wins. Guess what? I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who was sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. A pair of scales. Why? Because we're going to be rationing food. Rationing food. Verse 6 says, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, What's in the midst of the four living creatures? The throne. So God is saying exactly how he wants this done. There are so many, so many scholars who have so many explanations for this. Look some of them up. Look them up. If you want to go down there to, to, to that deep of a level, please do. But be a Berean. Keep it in check with the Word of God. Okay? And he says, a quart of wheat for a denarius. Okay, well, if he was alive today, he'd probably be saying, you know, a quart of wheat for a dollar. All right? Or five dollars or whatever our money will be worth when this happens. If we have money, we have a country. <laughs> And three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the wine. You cannot make anything without oil. Okay? Both of these are for cooking and eating and sustaining. Wheat is probably best. It makes bread. That's what Joseph did. He stored up wheat for seven years in Egypt. And when they had seven years of famine, Joseph took care of them. There's ministries out there right now that are, that are selling whole kits <clears throat> whole kits so you can make bread in this coming food crisis that we're looking at right now. Christians are rising to the occasion. The problem is Christians aren't raising their head up and looking. Wake up, friend. Wake up. All right? James 5, verses 1 and 3. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. Hmm. Verse 3, your gold and your silver have rusted, and their rust will be a witness against you and will consume your flesh like fire. It is in the last days that you've stored up your treasure. You know what? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. 
Um, if most people were candid, and they aren't, if most people were candid, they would say, probably not really laying up stores, tre treasures in heaven. Remember what I told you those treasures are. Wood, hand, stubble, which blow, which burn up, or gemstones and precious metals, gold and silver, which will be used to form a crown to lay at Jesus' feet. That's all there is to it. I'm happy that I'm going to be in the presence of my Lord. But I want so much more. I want so much more from the kingdom. Don't you? I'm not talking about prosperity gospel and all that stuff. No. I'm talking about I want to serve him here. I want to give the word of God out so that somebody walks up to me when, in the, when I'm there and says, thank you. Thank you. If you hadn't told me about it, I wouldn't be here today. Think about that reward. Verse 7. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse, a chloro, the, the Greek word is chloro, green, sickly. Think about Pale Rider with Clint Eastwood. I hate to use a worldly thing like that, but he rode in on a pale horse. Death followed with him, right? Pale Rider, that's what it meant. If you've watched that movie, if you haven't, don't go watch it, please. But if you have, you know what I'm talking about. And the name of him who sat on it was Death. And Hades followed with him. In other words, not only was he coming to take life, he was taking your life and you're going to hell. Hell, 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 hell. Can't say hell in church, Bob. Well, guess what? I can. Hell. Hades. You're going to that place to wait, that place of torment to wait until you're cast into the lake of fire. So he's coming and bringing it with him. See, all these people who want to follow Satan and want to take his mark and they're cool with it, you know, like, hey, me and Satan, like we boys, man. Okay, guess what? You're going to be boys forever. You're going to be buds forever. You're going to be friends forever. Forever. How long is that? Forever. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't. And power was given him, was given to them over a fourth of the earth. Power was given to them. 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 Got it? Four of them. Over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Uh-oh, there's one we ain't talked about. The beasts of the earth. Hmm. You think it's a coincidence that pit bulls just like to attack people? And I don't care if you have a pit bull and you want to try to tell me, they're loving dogs. My niece tried to tell me that. They're loving sweet dogs. Are they sweet dog? He tried to tear the door down the night I brought my family over for dinner. Now you multiply him by 20 and you got a pack of wolves that have decided to come into the city. Catch you out by yourself. When I lived in Arizona, I went for a run every morning at 5 o'clock because the sun popped up in the sky like, you know, like a toaster. And I would go run, and i run through these washes because the road went down through these washes. And as long as I stayed on that pavement and kept moving, they let me go. But they'd be sitting there watching me. And that's exactly what these satanic spirits are doing right now. They're sitting here watching us. They're checking our every move. So when they get their moment here, they're coming at us full speed. And they got a lot of friends. Hollywood, music industry, church, pastors, lay leaders, Sunday school teachers, spouses, children. They don't care. Whatever the flesh desires, it's whatever our eyes are going to chase. And wherever we turn our head to go, that's where we'll end up. Right? These guys are coming for business. Biz happening? No. It's a concerted attack. Friend, they don't want you to get there. And see if you can find news stories that match what they're talking about. I'll bet you a quarter you can. I'll bet you a quarter you can. So... 
chloros, they even use the term chlorine gas. Some, some uh, prognosticators have put that out there, you know, chlorine gas. And it may, it may be. It may be. We don't know. But that's not. This, this is the big picture, okay? This is not 38 and 39 of, of Ezekiel. That's a different era. It's part of under this, but let's not confuse them, okay? We're going to get a lot of this stuff sorted out as we go. This is a very quick study on this. Very quick. All right, I just wanted to tell you that I got so much more to share. The fifth seal next week, we're going to talk about <coughs> the martyrs under the throne. Very important. Very misunderstood. You might answer some questions you have about the rapture. You might answer some questions that you have about what happens to us in heaven. Okay? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again we thank you. We bless you and praise you. and we, Lord, we are so hungry to learn from you. We just ask you to continue to pour into our hearts this week as we study your word. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to know what it is you're teaching us and how to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name. <laughs>